it's an Android. And they just don't understand why there's any difference between iPhone and Android. And talking to people in the pub over the last couple of days, apparently this happens even worse here in Italy than it does in London. Um, it's very hard to convince a client that um, there's value in creating an Android app. We need to get rid of these things. And hopefully uh, I'm going to give you a bit of uh, encouragement as to why it's worth doing it during this talk. Um, I mean, Android users, Android's come a, come a long way in the last few years. We've had formal Android design guidelines for, God, it's just over, it's pretty much exactly two years now. I remember um, when I was at Badu and like Hugo Barra came and he said, yeah, next week we're going to have all these formal things and we're finally going to have um, proper Android design guidelines. They've been around for two years and a lot of apps have started to follow them. And users are, are more sophisticated and they know if you've just done an iPhone port. It's kind of obvious um, and... They're, they're, they're going to give you terrible feedback for it. They, they, we, we want, they, they chose an Android phone for a reason. They didn't choose an iPhone. You want to make sure that um, what you're actually delivering them is, uh, is what they're expecting on the platform that they're sitting on. Um, I like what, if, you, if you saw Jamie's uh, talk earlier on, by the way, you don't need to see this one if you did, but if you did, <laughs> if you did um, he said that navigation is not brand, and I thought that was a very strong thing to say. This is one of, the, one of the core differences between Android and iPhone is navigation, and we'll look at that in some depth in this talk. Um, graphic designers, um, they give you designs, and they're done, on, done to the pixel in Photoshop, and... You'll get one 640p device. I can't believe 640p still exists. We did, we did 722 years ago. We were on 1080 for a while. Um, but yeah, you'll get this, this 640p design, and you'll get one that's a little bit shorter than that. And then you'll get one for its um, one that's half the resolution. That's basically the same as the shorter predecessor. So you get two designs. Um, and I'll tell you to do that on Android. Um, and that's fair enough on iPhone. You can do it on iPhone because you can create two pixel-perfect designs. But on Android, it doesn't quite work that way, as I'm sure most people in this room know. Um, on iPhone, you've got three screen resolutions. Um, and two of them are the same. It's just like a low-res and high-res. It's pre-iPhone 4, was it? I can't remember what it was, when they went 320p to 640p. Um, on Android, well, this is what we found in BBC Weather a couple of months after release. We went into... Um, device statistics, and this was our top 10 screen resolutions, um, which is all very well, but that list didn't stop at 10, it stopped at 428. <laughs> um, and it's actually got higher than that now. There's, you, you've basically got pr as good as infinite screen resolutions on Android. Um, you just can't do it. You cannot do this on Android, it's impossible. You've got it, the way to, the way to explain it to them is like principles of responsive web design. So you're defining stretch areas in your designs. You can't have exactly the same. Uh, you're going to say, I've got this design, I want these things to go here, and when I've got space left over, this is the bits that I want to stretch. Um, using space in, <laughs> like that. Um, boundary points as to where your design changes for different physical, dis physical devices uh, of screens. And this is typically used for um, phones and tablets, but actually you can do much, you can go much more detailed than that. Uh, I've managed to forget that I did intend to one day show all the, the, the layout dash versions of the pixel breakpoints in BBC Weather and the various different features that kick in based on the device, the, the size of the phones that you've got. Um, well, as I said, sorry, I haven't got speaker notes here, so I'm sort of like going a bit ahead of myself there. Um, and of course you can't do that for gingerbread and early, so you have to sort of muck about a little bit with screens small and I don't know, various things like that. Uh, you're very lucky if you can just say, I'm only supporting four and up, which luckily now a lot of us can, with certainly with green screen apps. Um, they basically talk in pixels, not in dips, density independent pixels or scalable pixels. And um, it's, it's very hard to explain, we need to, we need to basically talk firstly in dips, and then if you're talking about text, then that's scalable as well. You, that should be scalable text too. Um, and the thing that I found horrible, and I've never found a fix for this, so if someone has it, please tell me afterwards. Um, they, they measure to the font baseline, not to the font padding, and like they do everything in Helvetica, of course, because they're on Macs, and the, the font padding on the two is very different. Um, I haven't found a nice way of getting the baseline to work. The baseline align doesn't really work for getting, thing, getting text boxes and things on the screen. Um, you've got to get your designers on side with, side with Android. They've got to, got to teach them dips and sips. Uh, try and say that dip is like a pre-retina pixel because that kind of makes it a bit easier for them. It's like a low-res pixel because that's kind of what it is. 
Um, responsive app design. If they know responsive web design, it's a hell of a lot easier. If you've got any graphic designers that have done responsive web design, get those on your team if you possibly can, because they're the ones that are going to understand this 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 thing has to breathe. You, um, your design has to be allowed to breathe in horizontal and vertical dimensions. Uh, the Android design guidelines, of course, point them towards those. Landscape mode, that's a favorite. Um, it really is, a f everyone knows this in this room, it's a first class citizen on Android on, in iOS. They don't really care about landscape mode. Um, w it's expected that your device will support landscape on Android and you need to make sure that any designs you get from designers uh, have landscape mode from the get-go. Um, that was one of the mistakes we made in weather. We got a lot of bad feedback about it, and um, yeah, we we uh, we corrected it pretty quickly. <laughs> um, and of course, the uh, the classic: just confiscate their iPhones, <laughs> give them an Android phone, take their SIM card out of their iPhone, put it in the Android. Even if you've got, even if it's like a Nano or something, just find an adapter, put it in the, put it in their Android phone, force them to use an Android phone for a month and then they'll understand what you're talking about because it's impossible just from looking at a device for an hour or two what the differences are between iPhone and Android. Um, the big no-no slide, when I, <laughs> when I did this talk in uh, uh, DroidCon London, this slide got tweeted <laughs> quite enormously. Um, um, the iPhone icons, we know what these icons are. They shouldn't be like that. They should be like this on Android. It's very simple to change them. Don't do it. Um, especially if you're SoundCloud and you can't get a search icon right, Jenny. <laughs> the back button of Doom. Um, yeah, don't have these in Android. You want an up, you want an up um, icon, but you never have a full-on back button like this, which uh, quite often designers will say, make this iPhone app and I want a big back button on it. You don't have it. You've got a back button on your phone. Every Android phone has since day one. Um, Carrots of contention. You don't have carrots at the end of lines like that. That's an iPhone thing. And of course, um, I call this big up, big down, where you have a big up button that's a back button on iPhone. And I saw it on an early prototype of an app that I was working on, uh, which you should never do this. It should be much more like this. Um, so, what can the, the, the thing I find helpful is. Talking about brand, um, and again, James, like navigation is not brand. It's, it's so much simpler than what I'm going to tell you now. Um, below the light, below the action bar, you can more or less do what you want. It's pretty much the same app between two. I mean, there'll be certain conventions, but it's broadly the same app. But the action bar and the navigation drawer, they're Android. They're owned by Android. You've got to make sure that bit is Androidified. Um, so get your action bar right, use action Android icons, don't use a platform icon, don't use a so-called um, brand icon. If there's a platform icon for it, use that instead. Um, Android navigation patterns um, and things like action bars, action modes like search mode. And just remind you what the search mode is, it's like when you uh, click here, you click the search icon um, and it changes the action bar to a certain, a different, um, a different mode like this. Um, the action bar is critical to get right and um, get the up button working absolutely right everywhere. Um, you can read all the Google things about the difference between up and back and they kind of can't change it themselves all the time. But you can change, the, up can be a shortcut through navigation in your app. You, you can cut off half your back stack if you use the up button, if you use the up key. Um, uh, yeah, um, just go and read the documents on that and make sure that you don't get any um, WTF moments because you don't want the user to suddenly end up in a place they're not expecting it to be. You just make sure you get make sure you get that part of the navigation right. Um, wrong way. Um, the seventy thirty rule for action bar buttons: whether you put an action button on the action bar on the right of the action bar. If you need it seventy percent of the times that you open the app, then show it as an action. Else, you put it in the overflow menu. That's the that's the rule of thumb. Sometimes something's so important to your app that even if they're not going to use it two thirds of the time. You're still going to put it in the action in the action bar, but generally speaking, if less than one in three times they use your app, they're not going to use it. Um, put it in the overflow menu. Um, use the official Android navigation drawer. Don't use one of these third-party ones that um, people have been using for a while. Um, it, we've had the nav drawer since I/O last year. It's very easy to do. I've done it in a couple of apps. Um, and. Um, I've just literally updated this slide two minutes ago, which is why it looks a bit weird. Um, Nick Butcher, Rich Hyman are the 
Android developer advocate. It's based out of London, but they cover EMEA, which includes here, of course. And Nick was telling me just now, bringing Alfredo Moresi, who's based out of Milan. He's cross-tech, not, not just Android, but he's developer relations. And so we should be using him as well here in Italy and Nick and Rich across Europe. Um, they've, I mean, I go to a lot of Android events um, and they've been around, well, not quite, well, Rich has been around since day one. Rita Mayer was around first of course, first was replaced by Nick. Um, they're very good, they're, they really do want, want you to get involved and I was asked to put this slide in when I first did this presentation. Just, they really do want you to talk to them and loop them in early with your projects um, and watch Android design in action. Yeah. Um, so, um, I'm going to do two case studies today. Um, the first is Sunny for Android, which is, might not be well known here in Italy. It was quite well, it was pretty well known in the UK. There was an app, there was an app called Sunny. It was a summarizing newsreader. It was started by this 16 year old Italian kid, well, English Italian kid called Nick Delicio. Had a huge amount of publicity. It was completely crazy. Um, I've never seen an app have, that wasn't actually that complicated, have that amount of publicity. And, um, they, they decided they needed an Android version, so they approached us to do it. And we basically just took it, we took it on board. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. On the left is iPhone, on the right is Android. Um, obviously, the thing's basically scaled up on a larger screen. Um, the, it, it basically summarized news stories. So it, would also, it had some proprietary technology that would take a news, story, a news source and try and find out the most useful things about it. And so and it would fit it in the space that you've got available. And so on Android, because you've got so many different screen sizes, a lot of that smart stuff had to be done on the client because on the iPhone it had like an iPhone 4 summary and an iPhone 5 summary, so you had like the slightly longer version. Um, on Android, it sent a set of priority sentences or prior priority paragraphs, and we worked out on the client what you could fit in and change, change the text scale accordingly if we could change the order of the sentences to make it a bit more useful stuff on it. Um, yeah, pretty similar screens left and right. Um, <laughs> here on the left, there's an iPhone screen. This is how we turned it into an Android screen. You, uh, obviously, your your back button becomes an up button. Um, your carrots, they're going to go. Um, you'll see the tick boxes on the left. We turned them onto the right-hand side tick boxes, but we couldn't win the war of getting rid of them entirely and making them more Androidy. And to be honest, sometimes you had to pick your battles. We just didn't fight that one in the end. Um, we found more functionality we could put into the app here and there. There's a, there was a search functionality there that wasn't in the original. Um, and <laughs> this one makes me laugh. Uh, the settings icon on iPhone, obviously you change it for an Android settings icon, which of course Google in their wisdom have decided and KitKat is going to get it back to looking like the iPhone. <laughs> so, and I was uh, searching yesterday trying to find a KitKat set, um, settings icon. You just can't find it. You do a Google search for it. Obviously no one's actually doing it, but... I suppose that's what we should be doing now. Um, some Android screens, left, left screen is iPhone, right screen, just we did an Android setting screen with a nice pretty background on it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do a quick demo of this. Um, if I can... Uh, if I can get this going... Good luck. Yeah, here we go. So this was how the app started off. Um, and you touch a story, and this is you can scroll your stories along in the subject. This was sport, I think. There's a little bit of parallax there on the top of the image. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then if you scroll the story up, you'll go and see the web the web page that it comes from. And it actually pre cached it then, because if you stayed on the story long enough, it actually sort of work out you might want to read the web page. So go and pre cache it for you like that. Um, scroll it back to the top, scroll it back down again, you go back to the summary, you can walk around some summaries like this. Um, the list of topics that you, you've, you've got you're interested in, again, there was one we just, uh, well, sorry, I'm going ahead of the video here a bit. Um, when we come back to that previous screen, there was one that, again, we just couldn't get past, we had to have that screen, but then we go into a much more Android-y screen here uh, that then goes into a setting screen that's Definitely uh, looks much more Androidy, kind of <laughs> as close as we could do. Given the, given the, they were very strong on their branding, but they did let us turn it into an Android app, which is good. Hey, anyway, that's uh, that was summary. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, um, that's probably the last time we ever see that because uh, they, they turned off the servers a long time ago. So I haven't hard, hard formatted my Nexus 4. Uh, and when I do, if I don't save the private data, you'll never see it again. Um, so what happened next? Well, um, it's still actually sitting there in Play Store ready to publish. And I checked this th this week. You can still hit the you could publish it today if you wanted to. Um, and there's the summary for it. It's all ready to go. Um, but basically, Yahoo bought the company. They closed down the iPhone version the very same day and then never released it for Android. It's a real shame because... Um, Google were all over it. They were ready to feature it in uh, the Android Hall of Fame. It was going to be the third app ever that had got that. Um, and but because because I worked at the BBC, um, the day the story came out, uh, they they had Nick Delisio's big story, and he sold his company to Yahoo. But I went over to the journalists and I said, "Do you want to see the Android version?" And they said, "Do you want to give us a quote?" And so here we go. Less enthusiastic about the acquisition was app developer Little Fluffy Toys. The London-based company was commissioned by Mr. Lucio to create an Android version. Little Fluffy Toys director Kenton Price, who was also contracted by the BBC for, um, obviously, need to be clear about that, said that his firm was told the Yahoo deal was on the cards, but was disappointed the app would never be released. It wasn't exactly what I said. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so that's there for posterity. Uh, it's a shame it was never released because it was a really great Android app. Um, but BBC Weather was released, and we'll talk a little bit about this. Um, BBC, of course, a massive brand. Um, and they needed the weather app. They didn't know whether they wanted native or responsive. Um, they, they'd had a lot of criticism about their Android apps, um, and they, they internally they are aware of that, and they know that they've got to improve them. And they went around a bunch of London developer events and things to actually try and find people that could that could help them out with it. And eventually they approached us and uh, I went on site to work in London on it. Um, the, the designs were created by a Soho agency and they're clearly iPhone designs. You look at the middle here, that's meant to be Galaxy S3, is it? And if you look at the uh, all of this stuff here, this is just... It's just photoshopped and iPhone stuff, basically. Um, like this, this, this slide cracked. This bit cracked me up. It's the standard Android share icon. No, it's not that you idiots. This is what an Android share icon looks like. They, they, they couldn't get a lot of things right, and this was meant to be like what we meant to do on Android. Uh, again, let's put Helvetica in Android. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to put we're going to put Roboto in it, and we're not going to make it look like this. We're not going to do pixels to the pixel. We're going to do it in dips. So this is what you can expect from your Soho agencies that are telling you how to develop an Android app. Um, so um, I worked with the product owners and the UI and the UX team. They had an in-house uh, UI UX team. So once it was handed over by the agency, then we did have some more say on what we could do with it. Um, found some areas we could put Android stuff in it. And I was very much an Android cheerleader when I was there. Um, and suggested a bunch of extra features we could add that were Android specific. And then went and added some fun Android stuff. So put in <laughs> NFC support so that you could like bump your locations next to each other with your phone, which is completely pointless. But like l just every reviewer picked up on it. It was uh, you'll, you'll just see it in all the reviews if you go and look. They say, yeah, the BBC put. Um, you, if you've got an Android phone, you can uh, share your locations on NFC, which obviously was a fantastic thing everyone wants to do. Um, <laughs> Lo um, no, seriously, um, the product owner called it uh, Kenton's functional show to his mates. Um, the lock screen widgets, uh, that came from when I was sitting at IOMS talking to, um, well, I was watching Rito's uh, presentation. He went, go and spend 30 seconds putting lock screen widgets into your app. And, uh, of course, it didn't take 30 seconds, but it was a, it's a thing you can just put in very quickly that's like brand new stuff that makes it looks like, look like you know what you're doing, like daydream mode as well. Um, well, it's, no one's ever used daydream mode on Android, but it's there and it's a cute little thing and maybe it'll pick up one day and people that find it think, oh, that's really cool. And the same as Dash Clock. We didn't anywhere say we'd done Dash Clock integration in any of the publicity, but users find it um, and they um, and they love it when they find it and they really love that you've made the effort to to use all these little extra things. Um, it was, again, James talked before that was great, um, talking about polish. It's just polish on your app to show that you've made the effort and you've cared, you've cared about Android users. Um, and you don't need to shout about it because like your early adopters are going to do it for you, to be honest. Um, and 
they love Easter eggs in their apps. And I don't know if anyone's got BBC Weather here. It's limited to the UK, unfortunately, so you can't download it if you've got an Italian registered phone. But there is a little Easter egg in it that if you go into the um, go into the settings about and you look, you've got a version number. And as Android users, as we know, you tap the version number seven times and you get a little Easter egg come out of it. Um, so demo of BBC Weather. Let's uh, let's switch to that. Um, it def I did. I swear to you, I did not name that. <laughs> <laughs> How do I how do I get this full screen? Someone, oh. hang on, I'm not full screen on this, or am I? God, I hate you. <laughs> Where is he? He's hiding down there. It was Sebastiano did this. I knew I was going to get in trouble for it. Whoever's watching this on video, right? Uh, this is who you need to hire in the next job. Um, so this was just to show you the first user experience, actually. I just installed it from scratch. And then you, you start the app, uh, you, you hit open, and this is what it does. You locates you to in straight away, you get straight into the app. There's no config, you don't touch anything, and you're straight in. Um, then you can, a little bit of view page of stuff, you can uh, go and look at the weather, you can tell, apparently it's heavy snow this afternoon. Uh, the Met Office date is terrible for Italy. It's, it's really good for London. But, and again, you can uh, scroll around sort of like various days and things like that. Um, there's a nav Android navigation drawer in here that was put in very much at the last minute. I don't know if you see there's some help text in there. Um, we that came in at a later a later date. Um, we found that users uh, didn't couldn't work out how to add locations, and so the first time you do something, it'll put that data until the user does the thing that you ask them to do. So it said at that point that data said. Um, please click this and then add a new location. It won't show that again when you open the nav drawer. I've gone and added a couple of locations. If I open the nav drawer now, um, hopefully that's what the video does, you'll see now it tells you how to reorder and delete. I just reordered, so I've closed the nav drawer. If you open it again, it doesn't tell you to reorder anymore. Um, if you delete something and close it, you won't be nagged anymore, but it's there. And ever since we added that, we never got any uh, questions about that again, which has been really good. So anyway, this is what BBC Weather looks like. Um, yeah. Um, that's a live rating, by the way, that 4.6. Um, so, <laughs> I can resume this. Um, so, yeah, the yeah the reviews in that, this was one from Gizmodo that obviously had me glowing with pride at the end. It's just saying the BBC does it better on Android for once because they did pick up on the extra things that we did in the Android version. And you see this through a lot of the reviews that came out last year. Um, they're, they're given sort of like an iPhone version, Android version. To be honest, they were prompted a little bit by saying, this is what extra the Android version does. And the product manager was actually toning it down because he, um, he wanted, to, be, he wanted to, to talk more about it, but didn't want to show any bias either because the BBC doesn't do that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, we still got some really nice reviews out of it. Um, user response, um, again, this was... Um, so the the five star to one star reviews is my favourite one. It's like a hundred to one, um, and we did, we were on four point seven. We dropped a little bit to four point six. Um, this is my favourite review of all time. BBC, it was my dream that you would make a weather app, and my dream has now become a reality. FFS, your sublime app is just as beautiful as the nature documentaries you create. The joy you have created within me makes my soul feel refreshed. My heart is so deeply in love with your app. Those who do not see the beauty of it are fools with a consciousness worse than that of an ant. O oh, ye stupid and blind ones with defective reason, open your eyes. Love you, BBC heart. Weather animations would be great, please. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a wind-up. I I, we still don't know to this day who did it. So. <laughs> Uh, Google's response to it, um, they featured us, they featured us, uh, I think, four or five times now, um, which uh, is featured as of right now, actually, going place on the UK. It's an under utility and lifestyle apps as of about an hour ago. Um, it was chosen as one of just 17 apps from over a million on Play Store that was in the best apps of 2013. Um, 
And client response, uh, this is what the product manager had to say, and it's just like all sorts of crap. And like, <laughs> I can't read you all of that. But basically, he's saying that this was one of the most successful app launches, and future app developers are going to follow what they learn. And that has happened. I, like I said, I'm still working at the BBC and working on the news app at the moment, and a lot of what we did, they know that we've got to do it differently on Android to iPhone, and that really has been, that really has been learned, which is good. Um, on BBC Weather, they just announced um, cross-platform across both platforms, 5 million, and it's limited to the UK only, so that's pretty good. Um, there's 60 million people in the UK, um, and they're saying it's 50-50 Android and iPhone. So I can't give you the exact numbers, but yeah, it's 50-50, it's about 2.5 million. Um, the market response, um, well... <laughs> Uh, for a while, we were the number one free app amongst all apps, which is what Flappy Bird's doing right now, if you go and look at it. Uh, it's beating Facebook, WhatsApp, Candy Crush, and Skype. The number one, that was an unbelievable achievement, and I was like punching the air that day. Um, there's, there is an open beta for it that you can actually go and join. Um, and beta versions go out early, you can uh, go to that URL. This presentation, by the way, is online. You can go and look at this URL later. You don't need to take it down now. Um, and yeah, so what have I been talking about? Get your product manager on side. This is one of the most important things. You need a product manager that's going to be strong and support you in the decisions that you're telling them. We need these features on Android, and this is why we need to do it, and this is why Android matters differently. And it's it's a first-class citizen. It has to be. Um, again, your graphic designers, they have to understand it. Um, say where you can do different things on Android. One of the One of the tragedies really that people still do iPhone first is that there's so much stuff that they don't think about that could be done in an app that you can't do an iPhone that you can do on Android and if it ever does switch that people develop Android first you can have much more capable apps but even though that's not happening yet I still don't think it's happening yet um, you can still say these are the extra things we can do on Android that make it a better app as a result and that users are going to really thank you for and again, see what else is out there and say these are the things that make it um, make it happen and get your action bar right and and add all your Android, you flourish your stuff and then come here and get flown out of here to Italy on vacation <laughs> next year. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Um, you can go and get the presentation right now on that URL, littlefluffytoys.mobi, because the .com site got a fact. Um, but uh, um, I think we've got maybe five minutes, so if you have any questions, feel free. Otherwise, just find me afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I played it for ten minutes last night, and rather than throw my phone at the ball, um, I uninstalled it. <laughs> Um, you said on one of the slides that you were misquoted. <laughs> Would you care to elaborate on what your comment actually was? I think there's a video in this room, so no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me in the pub later. <laughs> one of the major issues is convincing your product owner. Uh, basically things of money instead of functionality. How did you convince your product owner to spend a little more money um, but getting a much better result? It's a, it's a really good question. Um, and the way it worked on, on weather, um, the, we were slightly, we kind of Android was in running two weeks, it was running two weeks sprints and Android was one week behind iOS. And there was actually, there was three people on iOS, there was just me on Android, but they were facing all the difficult bits first so that I faced a lot of the, I could, I could learn from the difficulties they'd had in the things, the features they were implementing. Um, which meant that I had a little bit of spare time and then when they were doing testing, like a lot of those late features like dashboard integration, like the, um, the um, the daydream was literally the day before release that was put in, because the, the the little Easter egg was put in three days before, and then I thought, well, we can turn that into a daydream as well. So that was put in literally the Saturday, and then we went live on the Sunday evening. So it, it was just, what can you do in the time? Put it in if you've got permission to, and if you're confident that you're not going to break the core product by doing so. In terms of summary, it was a, that was again, that was a very good question. There was a list as long as you're on with things that needed to be fixed in that app. Um, 
we, we had a lot of help from uh, Nick Butcher, actually. We had, had about 35, 40 feedback points, and they just had to be prioritised in terms of any client relationship. What can you do? What's the most important things to do? We got about 15 to 20 of them done in that first version. So, yeah, you, you, you have to convince them that by, having, by delivering a polished product, you're going to get better feedback and more chance of getting featured, which, of course, is the thing that sends your downloads through the roof. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one. So how can you convince a product manager to drop one of the future in order to polish your app better? <laughs> um, I haven't had to face it. I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, buy him Sambuca. <laughs> don't know. And have you ever had a situation where you have been asked to, do, to design an application in the same way as an iPhone with all the animations and everything? And you had to convince them, like, oh, you you know, in Android, the user, Android users, we don't like animations at all. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we just have to, like, click, and then things will appear. Because everybody knows here that the, uh, Android anim um, the animation framework in Android is a bit lag behind compared to, Andro to iPhone. So mm -hmm. how can you manage that, that situation? I don't know if you noticed in the in the summary demo a lot of the a lot of the animations you um, when you selected something it'd scroll off to the left and stuff and Nick Delicio was very strong on making sure we we want these exact same animations there. Um, a guy called Chris Baines who works in Google in London he was really against a lot of those things and saying please take out these animations we don't want them in Android. But I wasn't too religious about that sort of thing. It's things where you make a thing, you're trying to make navigation and nav drawers and things like that. When you try and make them look like iOS, I just won't do it. It's You don't want to deliver an app like that. Um, you don't want that sort of thing to get out into the ecosystem. You want to be proud of what you've done. The animations themselves, I don't think that's such a big thing. But making sure that it fits in its home, because you're, you're delivering your app in, on an Android platform. You want to make sure it's the best Android app you can be while respecting the brand of the company you're working for. Okay, thanks very much everyone. Appreciate it.